where are you right now? We're, I think, just leaving Scotland. We're close to coming back into England. Um, I haven't been paying that much attention. <laughs> did you, uh, how'd you celebrate yesterday? Or did you? Yeah, yeah, we had, I had a few drinks yesterday evening. I had a couple at the golf club, and then um, we just stopped near a pub around the corner from our house and just had a couple and just had a quiet one. Are you, uh, are you famous now? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I'm just same old piece. <laughs> and um, just having a good time, man. <laughs> when when people start chanting beef, you know what what was going through your mind when you started here in the gallery chanting, man? I love it, man. I absolutely love it, and um, yeah, it, it means a lot to me, you know. And I don't know, it made me pretty speechless this this week. Like Saturday, Sunday, it was just crazy, and um, I remember it forever. If you were going to describe how you look to somebody who has not met you, how would you describe how you look? I'm such a good-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know, man. Just, um, I guess, normal bloke with a beard. <laughs> and that with a bit of a belly, I guess. <laughs> uh, that, and you got some hair there, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's how you got your name. So... I, People look at you and probably go, you know what? You're you're a hefty guy. That's how you got your nickname. But beef has nothing to do with your size, right? No, no, it doesn't. No, no it's down to my hair and my head. <laughs> <laughs> and who gave you that nickname? One of my good mates, um, who's a member of my golf club. We grew up playing junior golf. Um, he's a few years older than me, and um, yeah, he, he just said it one day and sort of told everyone. And it just stuck. Everyone just started calling me. And they're like, do you mind? And I was like, I don't mind. Call me what you want. Like that. So then everyone just started calling me beef. And, yeah, it just stuck, man. We need to get a sponsorship for you, though, Beef. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> like like some kind of steak or something that, you know, you're, you're going to be the spokesperson for, uh, for hamburgers or uh, some kind of steak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be cool. I like that. Uh, did you get to stay and watch uh, Stenson and Mickelson finish? No. By the time um, I come off and signed my card and did a few interviews and that, they had, they had finished. And uh, that, but I'd say I, I want to watch the highlights. I want to watch the highlights because I'm sure they were playing a different golf course. Oh, the way those two were playing, I, to be that far ahead of everybody else, I mean, that was crazy to watch. Yes, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And like, like I think I heard someone say that if Phil had shot their score, he would have won like 130 opens or something like that. Is, I think is that true? Yeah, I think it's he would have won 140 uh, British <laughs> Opens out of out of 145. I think. Oh man, that is crazy. But like, I, I thought I was I started off fairly well. After six holes, and I looked at the scoreboard on seven, and that, and oh, they were both like four under. And I was just like, oh man. <laughs> How did you grow up playing golf? Just there uh, through my dad. We used to we used to go and play like the local like uh, pitch and putts, um, and like hit balls in one of the local fields. And then I joined my home course, North Middlesex, when I was nine, and um, yeah, just constantly played it and. Um, Instead of doing, doing homework at school, I guess I ended up playing in the summer at <laughs> the golf course <laughs> more often than uh, finishing off my homework. <laughs> Did you ever have that moment? Like, were you ever intimidated playing with these uh, guys you'd watched on TV? Yeah, I think at the start, but it's an it's an experience thing, and the more you the more you get to know them and, and be around them and that, um, the more comfortable you get with it. It's, I think it's like anything. Um, you just need to sort of put yourself up there and get used to it. Where's your next tournament? Well, I'm not sure. I'm hoping <laughs> uh, USPGA. But um, I think they they were doing it after the Open, I think. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm trying to wait to hear about that. And obviously, um, if we're getting that, I'll be there. <laughs> oh, so you don't, even, um, you don't even know if you're going to be able to play in the PGA? I'm not too sure. It's usually top 100, right? I think so. Uh, 
Paulie, check and see if Beef is going to be in the PGA. How am I supposed to know if he doesn't know? <laughs> well, just just say, what, what? how do you qualify for the PGA Championship? We'll look into it. It might be, because now you're ranked, what, 90th in the world, Beef? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think 90, 89. Yeah, so as long as you don't do anything to screw that up uh, before the PGA, you, got, you should be pretty good, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe we'll just petition the PGA to have you. I, I think you're going to be surprised the reaction of Americans uh, if you get a chance to play in the PGA, the, the reaction to you when you get here. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. And, um, you know, the more love, the more love I get, the more I'm going to give back. It's just <laughs> how I am. And I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, congrats. That was uh, well done. You had fun with it, too. Uh, you know, it was different to watch somebody who's playing a tough course in a big championship uh, like that, and you enjoyed it. People could uh, certainly identify with that. So congrats, and hopefully we'll see you stateside. Perfect. Thank Thanks you. A lot. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew Beef Johnston. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.